Hi folks, this is Johnny Cantor and we're going to play Vice Project Doom. We're going to find the right save state. Yes, success. Ah, uh, South Central America. So here we are in South Central America. If you have been following along with the story, then you realize that we're here to check out the Ricardo connection between the uh, mysterious green gel found in the... Uh, truck that Hart blew up in the first stage. I thought I would give Hart a break from narrating some of the videos because um, one, that voice is a bit hard on my own vocal cords, and two, I am not very good at this part of the game, so I'm probably going to die a lot, and I doubt I could have a coherent narrative when I'm constantly falling off of platforms. But I am glad that uh, people seem to be responding to the um, in-character narrations. And by people I mean the uh, two people that watch my LPs. So anyway, now we're in the uh, South Central America level and really the enemies kind of stopped making sense at this point. At the beginning of the game, there was some logic to it. You were fighting Oh. I just want to point out right now that just like Ninja Gaiden, the worst enemy in this game are the birds. The birds are ruthless. Ninjas and soldiers I can handle, even the guy with the bat. But the birds? Every time I see the birds I have flashbacks to, I think it was Ultra J-Man playing Ninja Gaiden. Terrible things happen whenever birds are involved in NES games. Oh. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah. The enemies kind of stopped making sense at this point in the game. In Chinatown, it made sense who you were fighting, because you were fighting, uh, you know, Chinese zombie-like creatures and mutants. Which, based on the storyline up to that point, had a certain internal consistency to it, but... Now we're finding ninjas, uh, guys with bats, and birds. I suppose the birds make sense for the jungle setting, but I have no idea what the ninjas are doing there. Whew. Alright. Well, we're doing okay so far. But yeah, we've reached the... Uh, I think we're more than halfway through the game now, so the difficulty does spike up a little bit. So it's not incredibly difficult. It's not... It's definitely not on par with any of the Ninja Gaiden games in that sense. Because this game is certainly beatable. Whereas I think I've never gotten farther than maybe about stage 3 in any Ninja Gaiden game. Uh, this next part here. This is the hard part. If I was going to have Hart narrate this, I had a line that he was going to say it was something to, effect, to, the, to the effect of a man can deal with the fact a man can learn to cope with things like other men trying to kill him but what do you do when fish start shooting fireballs at you because I don't <laughs> really understand where the fireball shooting fish work into the rest of the storyline I suppose what it is is that uh, as we close in on the beta corporation we see more and more of their failed experiments. Ah, oh, game over. First game over screen of the LP, I think. Here we go again. But, yeah, expect to see that happen at least once more. And that's why no character narrations this time. Plus, I, I do miss the sound of my own voice. And I like to think that people are watching the LPs because they like to hear me talk. At least to some degree. And again, when I say people, I mean my two viewers. I should give a shout out to uh, New Five Banga because the idea of having Detective Hart narrate some of the LPs was actually based on um, listening to some of Banga's LPs, particularly the one where he had. Um, I think he was playing Mega Man 2. And he came up with the idea that in Mega Man 2, Mega Man had a chip inserted into him 
which caused him to speak and take on the persona of uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage whenever he fought a boss. And I thought that was pretty funny. So I wanted to do something kind of in that vein. <laughs> I think I'm making the vines look a lot harder than they are. It's just kind of a timing issue. Let's see, I might, uh, I might be able to beat this boss the way I am right now. Okay, this is the MS Scorpion. It is um, techno military technology that the uh, Beta Corporation created for the U.S. Marine Corps, actually. It was supposed to act as tank support. And probably for obvious reasons, as you can see, it's shaped like a tank. It's not a especially hard boss, even though I did just die on it, but <laughs> considering, you know, the fact that we're, I think there's eight stages, so we're more than halfway through the game at this point. That's not that bad. Because usually there's going to be multiple projectiles on the screen, and you're going to have to dodge all kinds of stuff. So really a boss like this is fairly nice of the game at this point. Let's try this again. Although one thing to note is that um, this boss is really the exception to the general tactic of stand really far away and throw grenades at the enemy. Because I just could never seem to actually hit this one with grenades. I'll, I'll show you here. Oh, I got it that time. But usually, usually I'm standing too far away, or too close. Anyway, I don't want to die again on this. If you can just dodge the missiles, then you're good. Whew, okay. Made it past that. 